certainly been a very successful night for Sunshine Machine as Chuck Mambo qualifying for the final of this World Championship tournament a little bit later on. He's already, of course, though, afterwards suffered an assault from the man he defeated, Karen Law. But regardless of that, Sean, Chuck Mambo's partner here, C.K. Cooper, with an opportunity to join him in the final if he can put away our last-minute tournament entrant, Mark Haskins. There's loads of interesting things going on in this match. If TK makes it into the Fatal 4-Way with Chuck Mambo, the dynamic of that match, I think, just swings completely in the favour of Sunshine Machine. And questions would be, what would their strategy be going in into that Fatal 4-Way? You've also got the fact that Spike Trivé has been replaced at the last pretty much the last minute by one of the greatest wrestlers in the, in the world. Now this is a world, this is, this is a world class performer right here in Mark Haskins. Mark Haskins enters the Clapham Grand. And again, especially with Paranoir no longer in the tournament, Haskins is going to be another one of those guys who, for, their, for a lot of fans' money, and certainly for my money, is now the man to beat in this tournament bracket. Yeah, I think so. I think you said it on Twitter best day that Mark Haskins' inclusion completely changed the entire dynamic. Because as we said, he is genuinely one of the best. In the corner to my right, representing Sunshine Machine, Woo! the Headbutt Messiah, T.K. Cooper! <laughs> and in the corner to my left, fighting out of the hills of Malvern, Mark the Hatchet Haskell! Well, as we were saying, Sean Mark Haskins, a last minute entrant into this tournament, but I don't know if that's a, a disadvantage for Haskins or a disadvantage for Cooper because TK Cooper had, had prepared himself for several weeks here for Spike Treve, only for this twist in the tail to happen with just, just what, 48 hours or so to go. And uh, when, when we say replacement, I, don't, I think you've got, you got to say this is, Mark Haskins isn't someone who, you know, was making up numbers. He is a world class addition to this tournament. And, a and it's going to be interesting to see if TK, how TK handles this, really. I mean, this would be a huge victory for TK Cooper if he can manage to get one over Haskins here. And started off, started off aggressively. Motivated as well, to, not just by that world championship, but as we said, by the chance to join his tag team partner, Chuck Mambo, in that final. That was collar and elbow tie up here. Cooper, the bigger of the two men, that leverage advantage, but Haskins has been there before. He's faced many opponents who are different sizes and you can see it here he's got that wrist lock but TK Cooper quickly counters nice and TK. takes him down the headlock. This is it, this is with Haskins, the, the, the counters are going to be rapid. Yeah, there's no wasted motion whatsoever from Mark Haskins. Cooper's going to have to try and find a way out from between the legs here of Haskins, got him wrapped up tight but Cooper does find a way. Again, though, that rapid counter from Haskins is not giving an inch here to TK Cooper. Oh, we got a roll up here. One, four. Oh. Haskins just demonstrating early on just how dangerous he can be. Cooper just having to take a breath. He knows that a moment's distraction there, and he could have been eliminated from the yeah. tournament already. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, if any of these competitors, after all the matches that we've seen, they've been grueling, aggressive, physical affairs. If either TK or Mark Haskins here manage to squeak through this in a relatively quick fashion, then I'm going to say that that's going to make them an immediate favourite going into the Fatal 4-Way. Well, except for the fact, of course, that this is the, the last first round match. So by luck of the draw, whoever you, wins this is going to have the least make, amount of rest yeah, time. Yeah, you make, make a solid point here, Dave. So if anything, time is of the essence for both of these guys. And I think we might see 
we might see the pace of this match probably get quicker a lot sooner than we normally would in a traditional contest. They don't have the time to be able to build up momentum because of the short turnaround between this match and the main event. That will be in both of these, mind, uh, both of the, these men's minds. Askins focusing his attention there on the left knee of TK Cooper. Now just delivering those knees right into the midsection of TK Cooper. Cooper with that Samoan, nice Samoan Polynesian background Cooper has. Mark Haskins from a very different part of the world. Yeah. The, the hills of the Mulverns. Yeah. Teach them to chop pretty good up in those hills. <laughs> Absolutely. TK having to weather this storm. Irish whip into the corner. Oh, it's nice of TK. Cooper went for a close. I didn't get it, but he's gone behind here. Elbow from Haskins frees himself. Haskins is going to go to the ropes. There's a high leg lariat from TK Cooper. Haskins in a little bit of trouble here. Just a 2K. Haskins taken by surprise there with the agility of the big man. P.K. Cooper getting pretty close, second or third time as well that, that Cooper's had a near fall. Like we say, the pace is going to be frenetic for this one. Oh, it's a nice little kick to the midsection there from T.K. Following up, staying on offense. Cooper with the elbow to the back of the head of Haskins, as you say, trying to maintain this advantage that he's got. He turns Haskins around, scoops him up, slams oh, him down. Hard scoops slam. Cooper going to again try for the pin and Haskins kicks out. But every time Cooper goes for one of these covers and Haskins has to kick out of it, he exerts more and more energy. He's wearing him down. And, and that's part of the strategy, I think, for Cooper. Just keep on him, force him to make that decision, force him to prove that he can still kick out. And, and eventually, you're going to tire your opponent. Also as well, TK, very smart with this grounded offense. When you're, when you're on the grounded offense, it also takes less energy out of yourself. So you're wearing down Mark Haskins, but also TK isn't exerting as much energy being able to keep these holds on as he would be if he was doing um, a lot of lifting offensive moves. So this is a smart strategy, I think, from TK Cooper. Puts his body weight down onto the lower back of Haskins, turns him over again, another pin attempt from Cooper, another kick out on two from Haskins. And Haskins looking a little bit worse to wear here is Cooper who's been thinking about this tournament, thinking about the possibility of being the first ever Riot Cabaret world champion for months now. That's nice. I just couldn't, get, just couldn't get it locked in. Couldn't get him up for it. Oh. That from Haskins. Big opening for Mark Haskins here if he can capitalise. Big opening. Haskins is lining up TK Cooper for something here. Cooper, shot on clothesline. Rolls on to him, catches him. Big suplex from Cooper. Haskins in trouble. Cooper nips up. Favouring that left arm as well. Keep an arm up, Dave. A oh, big uppercut from Haskins. And the fact that Cooper missed that kick in the corner has given Haskins an opening. Haskins didn't need asking twice. He's going to take full advantage, going to send Cooper to the other side, but there's a reversal with the Irish whip from TK. Haskins goes to the ropes and gets caught again by Cooper. Pure, just pure TK Cooper there. Ran into a brick wall. There's nothing flashy about that. He's just, I'm going to knock this bloke down with their entire body weight. Cooper running in. Haskins able to send him onto the ring apron. Haskins is going to come back, but Cooper gets that boot up between the Top and middle rope to knock Haskins down. Now where's he going? TK Cooper up middle rope. The oh. moonsault. I tell you what, the elevation on that moonsault is absolutely outstanding. And I'm I'm with TK on that one. I'm absolutely stunned that that wasn't it. The referee is checking on Mark Haskins. Cooper having a, a chance to recuperate as well, but Cooper. Looking to, I think, hit Haskins with the, the knee to the side of the head. Haskins, though, rolls him up off the rope. Cooper kicks out. Haskins bringing his foot down, stomping on the wrist of Cooper. 
saw him catch that left arm earlier on in the match. I think Haskins identifying it, isolating that body part. Cooper though with oh. snake eyes and Cooper trying to come off the ropes. And slight miscue, but he recovered very nicely there to Cooper. Give that boot that took down Haskins. Haskins, I'll tell you what, that, that, when, when, when TK got caught with that, that top rope, right, that didn't, that looked nasty, that looked really nasty. Haskins though, looking pretty glassy eyed, Cooper yeah, tried to get him what. again. Haskins with this the, be it for TK, the yeah, soldier shoulder roll from Haskins. And now Haskins got both legs hooked, Cooper still finds a way, but Haskins looking for the armbar, yeah. trying to hyperextend the elbow of TK Cooper. And there it is. That's going to be it. He's got the cross face now as well. TK, TK's net with that. TK in massive amounts of trouble here. Right in the centre of the ring as well. You see, he's trying to, trying to adjust his body position, yeah, get his legs towards the bottom ropes to use, Cooper. Trying to use his legs to try and break this hold. Gets to the ropes, the hold is broken. But I'll tell you what, this has got to be an excruciating amount of pain for TK Cooper now. Really, really having a battle through here. He's just getting a finger. Oh, just his fingertips away. But Haskins spotted it, and now oh, that's it. Haskins that's so got to be it. Oh, he's Cooper, yeah, good. Cooper got it with his foot after that arm was taken away. As you said, Sean Cooper just about yeah. able to adjust his leg and get it towards the bottom row. Slowly, meticulously moving his body throughout that entire hold. Oh, hang on, here we go. Oh, Haskins just catching that arm there. Now Haskins going to roll Cooper back in. Haskins, when he uh, gets going, he senses victory, but Cooper... With just coming back into the ring, left his head exposed. TK managing to catch it. Oh! Cooper brings his whole body weight down on Haskins. Will that do it? Cooper, he's got two, but he hasn't got three. TK Cooper, a half a second, maybe a quarter of a second away from. Again, what some people would call an upset. No, no disrespect to TK Cooper, Mark Haskins, one of the absolute best in the world. Yeah, but he also sat against TK Cooper with the last minute change and the caliber of the change as well. And also just a complete difference in opponent as you would be, you'd be expecting from Spike Gervais. Oh, pop up, power bomb. Yeah, TK Haskins. in trouble. Oh, big knee to the head. Now Haskins, what's he doing here? Haskins got him up. Oh, oh God, Haskins with a hatchet job. Haskins takes him down and puts big, away TK Cooper. Mark Haskins, wow, I'll tell you what. What Here a fatal four-way. I can't call. Haskins. I can't even begin to call that. Mark Haskins, Charles Crowley, Dan Maloney and Chuck Mambo. One of those men is going to be our first ever right cabaret wrestling champion. And I'll tell you what. All four deserve and worthy first champions for this company. Haskins still with plenty to say to TK Cooper. Cooper's offering a handshake. Haskins deciding whether to accept. And they're gonna hug it out. We'd like to see it. We'd like to see it. And deserved as well. Both of those guys put in a hell of a performance. So we now know who is in the final. It's gonna be Chuck Mambo, Dan Maloney, Charles Crowley, and Mark Haskins. One of those four men will end this night as the Riot Cabaret world champion history to be made